it is quite incredible uh, to look at some of the airport lounges really being renovated, but also some of the luxury hotel rooms at Charles de Gaulle. What's the strategy there? Uh, so La Première for... Uh for Air France, uh, we call first class here, La Première, uh, dates. Uh, this is uh, our you know, top line service. Uh, we've been, uh, historically, we've been able to produce a luxury service, luxury product, uh, second to none in Europe, across the Atlantic and many other parts of the world. As you may know, uh, Air France is one of the uh, two airlines that flew the Concorde. Uh, the luxury leisure market is very, very uh, healthy and strong here in France. Uh, and we've just increased, we've upped the uh, the product offering that we have with this new uh, ground service that we've got at the uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport here in uh, here in Paris. So interesting. So, uh, Ben, what trends are you seeing in August in terms of demand for Paris air travel? I know there's a shortfall because of the Olympics, but has there been a pickup in recent days after the start of the Olympics? So we already, uh, I guess a couple months ago, started seeing trends uh, decrease uh, in uh, corporate demand, uh, both inbound and outbound uh, from Paris and from France during uh, the Olympics. We already forecasted uh, that a year ago, but we uh, were not expecting the decrease that we did experience. So we, we did uh, release uh, advanced information on that. But what we're seeing uh, now, the trends are moving back to uh, what we've experienced over the last few years. So, you know, more regular uh, levels of demand for uh, both uh, both uh, business traffic and uh, high-end leisure. So uh, that's giving us a little bit more comfort for uh, the rest of the year. So I, I know costs have also been top of mind and one of the challenges that the group has been facing. How easy or difficult has it been to negotiate with French unions this year in the run-up to the Olympics, especially given all, all of the political turmoil that we're seeing in France right now? Uh, well, we've been developing uh, very, very strong relationships with uh, our 17 unions here at, uh, at Air France, and very happy and proud to say we have not had a labor disruption in six years, which is uh, very new for, uh, for Air France. We've had relative uh, uh, labor stability. And if you look at all the other transportation companies uh, in France, uh, the majority of them have had uh, big social uh, unrest, which has resulted in a lot of passenger or um, customer inconvenience. So up until today, and you know, based on the relationships so we have, we hope to keep uh, that stability in place uh, for the uh, long-term uh, future. I, I mean, are you expecting there has been disruption because of you know traffic control and things like that in France? Are you expecting things to stabilize? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we haven't uh, at Shell de Gaulle. We've been relatively un, uh, uh, you know, uh, un, we haven't been impacted by that even through uh, over the last couple of years. So we uh, we expect that to stay uh, stay in place. Uh, that relative calm. I mean, this uh, this airport is, uh, you know, it was not designed for uh, you know a hub structure, but for our own origin destination traffic uh, and our premium uh, offering. What we're putting in place, like this new lounge, is uh, is really fantastic. I mean, if you are starting or terminating your journey here in Paris, it's completely exclusive. It's like a private jet experience. We have a Michelin star uh, chef who runs uh, our restaurant. Um, you are completely outside of the public area for security, for passport control. We drive you to and from, uh, you know, your flight in a Porsche. Uh, and uh, really, it's uh, from what we've, uh, what our new customers or customers who are newly experiencing this, uh, the feedback is absolutely amazing. Yeah. But are, are you, you know, concerned at all about the reliance on these premium leisure passengers in the absence of business travel? Uh, well, historically, even before the Olympics, uh, Air France, the premium cabins, La Première, was made up of 50% uh, leisure. Uh, you know, Paris is not London in terms of corporate uh, traffic. Uh, so we, we are, we are uh, seeing our corporate traffic come back. I mean, the short uh, two-month two uh, hiatus, but uh, we expect that to come back. And leisure is very strong. And I think the Olympics is really helping us uh, better position uh, the country, better position Air France, or sorry, better to position uh, uh, France as a great destination. I don't know if you watched the opening ceremonies, but it was just like a, a fantastic ad for Paris. Everyone and watched France it. is already the number one. <laughs> <laughs> was already, France is already the number one inbound market. So this is why we're investing in this. We believe in this product. Uh, it is profitable for us. Uh, there is no U.S. carrier that offers a, a first-class product, and we believe our product yeah. uh, out of Europe is by far number one.
You were there. It was, it was a very controversial opening ceremony, but I'm going to say I, I was one of the few that really, really enjoyed it. But does Air France have a, enough planes for replacements of its old fleet, like the A321s? And do, it, there has been significant delays from you know, some of the manufacturers. D does that make you rethink your plans going forward? No, we're okay on the fleet front uh, as of today. We don't have um, we have a couple seven eight sevens that are left to uh, you know to be delivered at KLM. But uh, at Air France, we've got uh, a sizable order of Airbus A three fifties, which will be delivered through the end of the decade, and those are coming in pretty much on time. And on the medium haul fleet, we have a sizable fleet of Airbus A two twenties and Airbus A three twenty three twenty one Neos, and those uh, are pretty much on time. So uh, we uh, we're we're not uh, we're not too concerned about having the right amount of capacity and we do have quite a bit of flexibility right. in our existing airplanes and older generation that if we do have delays we'll be able to maintain the capacity. In terms of ticket prices do you think there's a structural shift in you know ticket prices going lower because the revenge spending on travel slows down post pandemic? I know Lufthansa has been for example talking about yields being under pressure especially on Asian routes. Uh, look we're not uh, we, we're not Heavily dependent on uh, on Asia, it is an important market for us. But with what's what's the most concerning for us are twofold. One, the fact that we there is a Russian overflight ban uh, for European carriers, so that makes travel uh, to uh, to Europe. If you're flying on a European carrier, you're adding uh, two three hours. Um, and on top of that, there uh, there are new taxes and charges which uh, you know are going to be imposed on flights uh, from Europe. To these uh, to these regions, so that uh, that's more. Those are the things that we're concerned about. Um, but in terms of uh, yields and how that's going to uh, you know have an impact on us with I mean, what you call a revenge travel, um, we don't see that uh, you know to and from Asia being that big of a big of a concern. Do, do you see it elsewhere in other routes in Europe, for example? Uh, in Europe, we're not a big player uh, in, uh, in you know on continental Europe. Uh, we uh, you know most of our European operation is to feed our long haul. Uh, the European market is dominated by low cost carriers. So they have the bulk of the market. Okay. Uh, we do have our uh, low cost carrier who's based at Orly Airport, and we are expanding there, uh, and that's working out quite well. Uh, you know, we're, we're the biggest airline in Paris. We historically have not had a big uh, low-cost uh, operation. So really, it's organic growth for us uh, at Orly. We see that being, uh, being positive.